What up, everybody? This is Phil John. Welcome to another episode of Phil John's VIP. Thank you for joining me every Wednesday night. I'm glad you begin to, you know, I'm glad you're stopping by every Wednesday to join me. Right after my show at 8 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, I want you to go over to the Brothers of the Gentleman's Corner. Those brothers are going to be talking about some good stuff. These guys are a, a, a group of men that come together and they talk about uplifting stuff. They talk about issues that relate to men of us at a, as a, 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 at a certain age. And they have a young brother there that also contributes to the conversation. I'm so excited that every week you enjoy coming and to the VIP and listening to who my guests are. I also... I'm really excited at the fact that you guys are sharing it. That's even even more dope. I'm, I'm super excited about that. But more importantly, tonight's guest. Tonight's guest, I man, I just can't wait to get it started. She is the girl from the cube girl from Queens now living out in LA. She has been featured as a lead dancer in Michael Jackson, Remember the Time. She has choreographed videos for Mary J. Blige. And yes, she is the producer and host of BET's Rap City for seven years. Some of you may be still old enough to remember that. Yes, she is. It is Miss Leslie Sager. We lovingly know her as Big Les, and I'm so excited that she has joined me. She is an icon, a cultural icon. Um, she is definitely what I would consider to be one of the elements. She is someone who is a, t a personality, an entity. She cannot be defined or contained but she continues to move forward and is still moving forward in this industry. I think she chimed in. I'm going to holler at her right now. You guys, this is going to be pretty dope. Uh, here we go. This is going to be exciting. I'm so, so excited. And let me see. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Les, thank you so much. How are you? I'm good, and I appreciate. Listen, the love and support that you give me all day, every day. I feel like you have pom poms in your air, and I am in your, in your hair, and I'm so grateful. And thank you, thank I, you. Thanks. I do, I do. And let me just start by saying this too, because I, I mean, I, 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 I spoke about this a few years ago, but I just wanted to say it now to you and publicly. Um, I first met. Big Legs when I was about 16 years old. It was the Black Spectrum Theater. And at that time, they were doing a, 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 a movie called Let's Get Busy. It had just been done with Dougie Fresh. And they were doing the sequel. And I was part of the youth theater company there. So I had, we were doing auditions. And Les came in. Les and Josie. And this other guy. I don't know who the other guy was. But <laughs> they came in. And I remember them reading for it. And I was like, wow, you know. And there was this buzz about, you know, them being dancers. But one thing I can say is that um, you have been one of those people who I've always looked at and, and that made me feel like it gave me license to do the same as oh. you. Because to see you go from Queens to I see you dancing on Soul Train, then I see you on Remember the Time. And it just kept going. Your, your career just kept flourishing and going. And I, and I always say, if there were two people from my community where I grew up that really inspired me, both were women. It was Tashina Arnold, because I remember her from Fox. Yeah, I remember I remember Tashina when she grew up in uh, on Fox and Inwood, and then you from the Black Spectrum Theater. So for me, it gave me, it, it, there's always those people that come in your life that you watch from a distance. And it's like, wow, you know what? I think I can do it too. It's and so thank, thank you for being that light for me. Thank you. And it's not often that I hear men say that. You know what I mean? So I'm totally honored, humble, grateful, thankful. I'm just like, you know, that girl from Queens who had dreams. Literally, it was like, I could not keep still. And my cartwheels, you know, took me to <laughs> And my mom, I say it all the time, still to this day, is scratching her head. Like, how did this happen? How did you yeah. break all the furniture in the house and get a full scholarship? <laughs> college and dance across the stage in Italy and all like how did this happen and she's still like what's what <laughs> you know? where did it where did it all begin for you um I mean so I can name so many places you know we're from the generation where we actually played in the street so me like yeah. clips in the park and all that other stuff and I was a tom girl I'm still a tom girl sporty spice I call myself because I can't <laughs> keep still and I love climbing on things um and like teaching myself gymnastics in the house and then 
I'm also a child of the YMCA, so my mom put me in a class there. She had put me in a trampoline class first, and the instructor was like, she's really good. You need to put her in a gymnastic class. And, you know, for a gymnast starting at like 10, 11, it's very late. And literally within a year, I was competing in national competition. So um, the YMCA nurtured me. They helped me get a gymnastic scholarship to Springfield College. Um, being a New York City club kid, you know, roller skate, handball courts, the club sneaking in but you could always get a fake id in new york and i didn't look my age so, you know, <laughs> being around all the elements and you know from the park to the jams and like being in clubs the circle and the battles and all that other stuff like I'm, q club i'm, I'm still I, you know i was in high school everybody was going to the q club um, i never went into the q club but yeah so all those things are like all make up who i am you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, back in those days, I can just remember being surrounded by just talent. And I think what, what have come to be popular culture now was really just kind of like um, the community back then. You know, like you said, I remember the jams that I couldn't go to because I was too young. But I remember just a, just a ball of creativity being around me at the time. And my, and I'm sorry to cut you off. My, no Driving. I like grew up in East Elmhurst, Corona, Queens, yeah. mm -hmm. and East Elmhurst, you know, kid and play are a little older. They went to school with one of my siblings, me and DJ, but we all hung together. So between right. Love Bug, Kid and Play, the Disco Twin, um, the Super Love MCs, like all of them were in my neighborhood and we grew up together. They positive graduated from high school together. Like, all of us, all the talent and all that energy, but it's still all the essence of like our concrete jungle know the style the fashion the savviness the street smarts the book smarts like all of that makes up all of who we are and just being brazen and bold for it do you think because i always say like looking back i feel like we were raised in such a concentrated area without social media so it gave that opportunity to kind of fester and nurture one another oh absolutely i mean you absolutely were influenced by you know the crease in the lead jean that somebody else had over there and the bomber jacket that somebody else had over there and the name belt that so-and-so had on it, the fresh pumas that so-and-so had on, as well as like the moves that, you know, crazy legs, with or whoever was. I'm loving it, I'm loving it, yeah. All of those things. And that's what's hard, like with living in LA, as much as like, I love the sunshine, the fact there's no winter, the spending so much time in your car, you lose your sensibility of awareness. So when I get home and I'm like walking the streets of the train, your senses are filtered with everything. They're sharp, you hear sounds a mile away, and somebody singing, somebody, moaning, somebody throwing up, you know, somebody running, you hear footsteps, you got to go, the, the beats playing, somebody, like you hear all of that. So when you live in your car so much in LA, this is a little bit, and you have to find other ways to like right. nurture. I remember you hanging out at, uh, at uh, KG's house in Jersey during mm -hmm. one of his backyard barbecues. <laughs> Do you remember, I had, for those of you who know Pookie Wigginton, he runs the uh, Laugh Factory Chocolate Sundays, and Pookie's like my homeboy, but I didn't know Pookie did gymnastics, so he bet me one day that, like, I couldn't do backflips out on the street in front of KG's house. I was like, what are you talking about? So he went like, off three back handsprings, and I was like, I got you, kid, and I did, like, round off <laughs> some assault, and he was like, oh, and everybody <laughs> used to have the best parties at the house oh my god yo you you've always been fearless i think that's one of the things i've always admired about you was your fearlessness mm -hmm. um and your approach to everything that you touch it just seems like you're like i i, I even watch you now it just seems like you machine you just keep reinventing yourself and reinventing yourself like what drives you what continues to drive you um you know i come from a family of women right who are just very self-sufficient independent Yes, we love our male partners too. We just, you know, we're there to build you up because we say we're independent, we want to do things for ourselves, but we like to bring stuff to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like we like to come to the arsenal full. My mom and my grandmother, I don't ever want to disappoint them. And they just, you know, them and my gymnastic coach, having a gymnastic background as an athlete where you are trained under certain parameters, discipline, mm -hmm. there are no shortcuts, you know, that's kind of like the gift that you get. So I'm not here to like do it on your home, take somebody out and still gifts. It's already anyway what's meant for me to be me. But I, I actually as stressful as it gets to 
get to the journey, I actually look back and enjoy the process and the journey. Sure, I wish that somebody would give me that million dollar contract or whatever right now so I can exhale. But when I look back at all the all the projects in between and all the things in the audition, I wouldn't change it for the world. I really wouldn't. What have been some of your biggest disappointments in that journey? Um, I mean, I, I could go on and on, but um, one main one, I guess, that I, you know, that always, I'm over it now because there was a blessing that came out of it was, you know, people get it mixed up, they live in, sex, they live in color. Like, I didn't become a fly girl. I was not picked or chosen to fuck a fly girl. And that, <laughs> all the news channels, I'm flipping like everybody, but the politics and the politics, and, you know, one day I'll talk about all of that in the yeah. book and stuff. Um, but I did not become a fly girl, but this is how, you know, God has the last word in the sense of humor is that as sick as I was about that, three or four months later, I got Rap City. So who knew what was around the corner? And then I ended up on Living Color a gazillion times with other artists when they perform the door, like, you know what I mean? So he mm -hmm. took me to that stage that's under a different umbrella and then elevated me too to Rap City. So now I'm doing TV and they're teaching me how to produce, segment producing and all that other stuff. So you never know what your blessings are. That's why you can't quit because you could be this close and like yeah, it's where like that big deal is, you know? Yeah. yeah. And what, what, what do you think keep you grounded throughout all of that? Um, one, it was like, you know, even though there are people who say that there's no plan B, I've always had a plan B. Like I went to college, I wanted my own place. My mother was like, you got four months to get out of my house, you know, once you come back or whatever it is. But she was always supportive. For me, it, I have to be my soul and going back to a nine to five is, is no blame for your girl. Like, yeah. you know, you just want to like cut your arm off if like you have to do something that you hate. And sure. <laughs> jobs like when it's been quiet and the phone doesn't ring and all that other stuff um and i you know but you're miserable in that space now you have to turn it into a creative space and i think the thing that around it is that nobody's you know the hustle in between whether i'm working that's and i still have to be looking for the next job because that's about to be over and right so the hustle is like a hamster wheel you can't stop you can't get complacent you can't get comfortable they're dancing on your ass learning tricks trying to come for your job you know, there's the next, like, there's always something. So you have to keep moving. You don't have time to rest. And there's so many, things. like, even you mentioning how we met, I forgot that I was even there because I was so, you know, at the moment, you're so busy looking for the next job and the next game. Right, right. You, know, you have no choice but to be grounded. And I don't care what anybody says at this level of, you know, or any level of entertainment. There are days when the phone does not ring for anybody. I'm sure yeah. Mel will yeah. Denzel stories upon and you have to know what to do in that space um and you know when you work for yourself as much as you hate a nine to five you end up working 20 so it's exhausting it really is exhausting and it's like but you can't stop nobody else is going to promote you or work harder for you than you i don't care what management you're on team hire nobody's going to work harder for you than you and that's the truth Amen. I, I, well, I don't want to ask you a question because this, uh, this is a problem that I have. This is sometimes or is roadblock for me. And maybe it's a stumbling block for you. I don't know, but I want to know if you can get through sure. it. Um, I am big with schedules. Like, I'm a planner, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is color-coded in my Google Calendar, right? So we know that in this industry, things change minute by minute. Right. How do you deal with not getting frustrated at those times where you was planning on a, a job or planning on working on a project and for whatever reason, at the last minute, that project just kind of like changes for you? In the beginning, it was really hard because again, I'm so regimented from plastics that I, my biggest pet peeve and my, my friends will tell you, I cannot stand late. I'm never, mm -hmm. I don't like late and I hate people to keep me waiting. I think it's the most disrespectful thing ever. Um, but yeah, production happens as it does, whether the star gets sick, truck, you know, that was supposed to make it to Madison Square Garden, got stuck in Phoenix, and so it's like, things happen. Yeah. So you have to learn not to hold on to it. And one thing I learned, and I forget, I think it was me who shared this with me, that, you know, rejection is God's protection. So when things okay. don't, it's like they're saving you from something. You aren't meant to be there. Whether it was that plane crash that happened with so and so that you were supposed to be on that flight, or you know the shootout that happened, like you just don't know. 
and you just kind of be like, well, you scheduled or it wasn't meant to be, and you have to find peace with that. I tell you, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm afraid of myself because I want to get, 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 get a huge amen to that. <laughs> that is, that is the, the truth. So you're deep rooted in your faith. How has your faith helped you push through? Um, because I know, you know, for, for those of us who have been in it for some time, I've come to discover that there are pretty dark energy around it. Sometimes it can no, be. Get it. But again, that all starts with your family too, right? So it starts with your family and, you know, whatever higher, whatever you believe in, giving you these gifts and say thank you out loud. Every time I wake up and, every, you know, for my sight, for my smell, for my cognitive, for my breathing, for healthy for being cancer all those things and for what my body if that you've given um and when especially when those times get dark that's really the person or the people or the spirit kind of go to the fun and some peace even if it's just not talking to anybody or just shutting down something is going to matter the universe you have to realize the universe is taking you to where you've gotten so far so there's something out there taking you to every single day and i just happen to be a strong for me, I don't know if you see my 1111, it's upside yeah. down. I noticed at a young age, I would see the clock of multiples all the time. Yeah. When I wake up at four, four or five, six, like, I see it all the time. And I just kind of like, once I started realizing what that was, you know, I feel protected and safe and at peace. And at the end of the day, you know, and not to take it left, but like with people with this vaccine, whatever the case is, day on earth is already written in the book. So if the back is supposed to kill you, then that was all supposed to happen. If the yeah. car that hits you was supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. I, days I just ask that it happens in my sleep when I'm 100 and <laughs> after I'm, I'm loving here on planet earth and I'm not ready to go. Um, you know, and that's, but I think you get so much anxiety if you start building and living like that about what yeah. if, what if. And it took me a minute. Like, I didn't even go on vacation for a long time because I was afraid, oh my God, and I'm just going to come and I'm going to miss the phone, uh, miss a phone call and blah, 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 blah. And then you realize, well, if that job is meant for you, it'll be you get back. Or you can just fight and come home early. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the rationale of it. Amen. It's true. It's a hard lesson for a lot of us to learn. But when you realize that whatever's meant for you will never pass you by, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of the load off. No, absolutely. And I think media is doing such a disservice to those of us artists who are in the quiet times when the phone doesn't ring, because then you start looking at other people's careers, like your peers. Yeah. Now, how did you get that job? Or how did the person who doesn't have as much history yeah. get that uh, and you start beating yourself up, you start doubting yourself, you start doubting your skill and your worth and your everything. Like you don't even, I'm sure the wheels would spin, especially in COVID, you know, and to see people thriving before, just people you know, came in the game after who've blown yeah. up yeah. You know, and all that other stuff. It's sickening. And you know that they have this much talent compared to you or they have this much blood, sweat, and tears. But you know what? This is the journey that God has given me and I'm walking this path. Well, you know, that's why I chose to do this platform and I chose to use my platform. I'm, people were trying to tell me for a long time to do something with social media. And I'm like, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to get on there and talk about like what, what I have for dinner tonight. That's not what I'm going to do. But instead of sitting back trying to complain about why I didn't get a job or why is my agent calling me or why is my agent submitting for, submitting for stuff? I said, you know, there's so many people that I have access to that I want to celebrate. And I, 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 I want to use my platform to do that because celebrating you makes me feel good. And yeah. having the opportunity, and having the opportunity to say to you that, wow, you know, back when I was 16, you inspired me. Like, you gave me license to be like, yo, I can do that too. That means a lot to me. And I'm just happy to have the opportunity to say that because a lot of people don't know. You know, yeah. we live our lives and we don't really fully understand that although you're living it for you, you're also living it for everybody else and people you don't even know who's watching you. Yeah, my mom would always say, you better do the best that you can you ever know who's watching. And your reputation is all you ever have. I would always make sure that whether I walk onto a set or leave it at home, somebody had to say about me it was not because I gave them the answer. It was a personal thing or, or whatever you felt, whatever your insecurity, not because I treated someone bad. And I, like, like I used to be on tour and I talked 
electrician and the gaffer and become best of friends with them. And I remember what it was to do extra, you know what I'm saying? And how they kind of dismiss you or whatever. So I always background one because particularly I want to see what's going on and who I see. But because we're all on the same journey. And again, you don't know if that person who's doing extra is the next Tarantino, you know? Right, right, absolutely. So what was it like working with Michael Jackson? That was probably one of the best gigs on the planet. Like you just kind of have to yourself because you don't dream about it, right? And I remember my first concert ever in life was Jackson 5 um, when they were at the garden. And I was really small, but you remember it because everybody loved to know Michael. Um, and that just kind of happened where we got a phone call. Some of us dancers like Washington Square Park, broke is all hell. We, everybody got auditions and we found out, I think it was like on a Wednesday or a that the audition was Saturday in Los Angeles. So I had to beg my mom for money. I was like, mom, please, I need, please just give me a flight. I actually stayed with the team at the time. She made it very clear that, you know, the director was the final set. Um, and my mother, thank God for her, found the money, gave me the flight to LA. About 20 of us got up there. John Singleton was somebody who championed dancers. He really knew like a lot of dancers and just visually knew everybody. So once he saw that we all showed up, he was like, Game over, everybody. So they made it really good for us and gave us per diem and stuff. Weeks and you know to roll up to Universal Studios and not be there on the tour, <laughs> and like <laughs> down stage and be able to have a drink at home and wardrobe with your name on it was like magic. So to see these gates and to be walking through is like unbelievable. Yeah. And so rehearsals for about two, two and a half weeks. We didn't rehearse with Michael until like a day or two before the shoot. Michael had private rehearsals. And so when Michael came in to show us the routine went, his was on a whole other level. Like he was, <laughs> nah, quack, ha, nah. and we're like, wait, what? Right, <laughs> right, right. Like that. So we had to go back, rework, step our game up, get it together. Um, and being around him was really dope. I mean, you know, he was very protected in regard of, we had to sign, you know, paperwork, size yeah. of a book. And, don't look at him, don't talk to him, like all that crazy. But as most artists do, the dancers, you know, the cool kids, who just don't care and can't stop moving and are always in the corner working on new moves and have their own style and their own fashion and stuff. Yep. And Mike kind of like gravitated to us and hung out with us. So to hear him like, you know, curse and stuff, he's like, nah, man, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> he's human. And that's kind of like, yeah. you have to recognize these people he's just real you know what i mean his blood is the same he pees standing up we hope you know what i mean like so yeah. that was dope and and just to move on to getting living single because it's like there's not to, to have that show open and to see you you're like that 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 fifth character well, I, I wish that, you know, Yvette and all of them thought I should have been the neighbor upstairs, too, because they never let me audition for that show. But uh, getting that job was, a listen, I wanted to work with Otis Salib, who was the director, directographer. You guys yeah. know he worked yeah. from, like, old days where he did good in black hair, and I don't want to be alone tonight. And the Wiz, right? Um, the I don't Wiz. know if he goes back that far, but I wouldn't, I don't, I don't know that early. I know all of his not work and he had done he'd been doing Malcolm and I was on tour I forget who I was with either Bobby or Heavy or somebody but I couldn't make the audition so I got back they had already started rehearsals and a friend of mine was dancing for him and they were doing the Lindy Hop which is just like my desired style of dance and women were just athletic and flipping and being tossed all over the place and dresses and everything so I came to the rehearsal she introduced me to him they were too far in that I could like jump in on the cast. So somehow he got my number and I get a phone call. I'm looking at the phone like, this ain't Otis. What? You want me to do what? And he was like, listen, I got this idea. I don't have a job yet, but I have this idea for this new Queen Latifah show. They need an intro. Perfect. I don't see anybody else doing it. Can we shoot? I was like, absolutely. A chance to work with Otis to leave. What are you kidding? So we go under the Brooklyn Bridge and we're there for like 9,000 hours. And, um, you know, I'm doing all these backflips and front flips and all this other stuff on cobblestone until the sun comes down. And 
you know, when I see the final edit, I was kind of disappointed. I was like, there's no gymnastics. There might be a version of that has a front flip or something, but I was like, but the master that he is, he did all of that. Of course, right. I wish right. four hours in, but you know. <laughs> and um, the fact that I'm still having conversations about it or can turn on my TV and still see it yeah. later, I'm like, oh, like it's the gift that keeps on giving, you know? Yeah. So, and of course, I keep trying to do the routine, and I'm like, it wasn't a routine, it was a freestyle. People are like, teach me the routine, and I'm like, it wasn't all freestyle. He just pieced it together, so that's a gift. And I hope if they ever bring that, that, that uh, Yvette Lee Bowser will let me be, like, neighbor upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. <laughs> in the, the reboot. <laughs> or, or rehearsing with somebody, like an artist, and, you know, work that into the storyline or something, so let's see. Now, you know, put, even putting my little uh, bio together. Um, I couldn't help but I couldn't help but see that it was very hard to define who Big Les is to the culture. Because Big Les, Big Les is such a cultural icon that I don't think that you can be labeled. You know, you can't, You if there's hip hop, you're there. If there's television, you're there. If there's film, you're there. So you've contributed so much to the culture. Just how does that make you feel? Um, when well, people say that about you. Well, it's crazy because people would give me a hard time about it. You know what I mean? Like you, it was easy for the men, somebody like Puffy to go and wear 20 hats and do 20 different things. Or yeah. the women, it was completely different. You know, people think that once you're a dancer that that's what you can do. Where really, most expressive people and in tune with our bodies as far as staging and awareness and stuff goes. And me, I'm just even more, I've been around a thousand times and still tell you where I'm at. Um, I also remember watching early in her career and of course having my mother in my ear, listen, can't dance forever, can't backflip forever. What else are you gonna do? Uh, you gonna go, right, right, right. you know, and I broke her heart. I got into a five year program with my gymnastics scholarship. I opted out early, so I was gonna go for a sport and physical therapy, but you can only compete for four years. So I was out going to Broadway, gotta go. Um, but you kind of like, so seeing her evolve into producer, director, actor, I was like, this is the trajectory I need to go. But, and I say this all the time, be careful of the things you say aloud because God is truly listening. And in high school, I wanted to be a journalist, class these journalism classes and I fell in love with it. And then there was one class that I just hated. I was like, oh no. I'm going back to sports medicine, like whatever. <laughs> but, you know, radio and television come into my life, and here I am in a journalistic platform, which is my go-to, like uh, writing and all that, which is great for me. So, you know, as I get older, there's ageism, sexism, and all this other stuff, I have to move in with the time. I, there's no other thing about it. And as much as, like, as I, I, I can still backflip, and you see me, I'm just trampoline and all this body hurts. So <laughs> I still get it in there. But it's like, woo, we wear a tear going on, you know? So I have, I have to elevate and evolve. Like those are my two key words for me, elevation and evolution all the time. So, and I'm hungry for it. Like really, really hungry. Is there any um, chance in the near future that you'll be producing film and directing film? Well, I have, and you know this, I've been on my dance documentary. Uh, we really before COVID use and stuff going. Um, and then that really kind of put a, a halt on stuff. And as much as I do some interviews, get Zoom and everything, just the quality and stuff was kind of shoddy. So uh, I'm at the stage now that our sizzle reel and I'm running uh, and trying to get some of these give me some cash so mm -hmm. I can get this and maybe like a trilogy of some projects. Done. It's really about some of us fabulous dancers of the 90s, that kind of a thing. You know. So yes, that's that's the next move for me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and I, you know, I feel like that's going to be the next avenue for you, too. Because I think that now, now in this industry, as far as um, film and TV, I think that women of color, their voices are being uh, uh, called for. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's necessary now for your voices to be heard and your stories to be told through your perspective. Yeah, and I. I get that chance. I'm gonna fight really, really hard to do the passion project. And somebody I'm talking to about this deal just asked, me, so are you trying to make a point or are you trying to right? Because even though this is about money, but most artists are 
quick telling their story and I had Man, to scratch. Really quick, one more thing. Your your mic, I don't know if you I feel like I'm starting to hear it like go in and out. Oh, I don't have a mic on. Oh yeah, I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Sorry, I think it was the Wi Fi maybe that because you called okay. Um and I'm like, it's hard for artists to decide. You know, we're set about our shit. We mm -hmm. love that creative story and all of that stuff, but ain't nobody trying to be broke around here either. No. <laughs> you know, that you make about who's getting this image and how much gold you're going to have and all this other stuff. So tossing and turning at night trying to figure that out. So I guess I'll cross that bridge when the paperwork comes, you know? That's good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I think it's I think it's I think it's necessary, you know. And moving in with your name as on as, as as EP executive producer and directing projects is going to be pretty dope. And there's so much content. I think one of the things through COVID, a lot of people did, as far as I know it for myself, is that we wrote a lot of stuff. And there's so many different stories that uh, should be told. And um, I think that women are just going to take it over. To be yeah. Honest. Me too, because as much as there are so many writers and so many stories to tell, Hollywood is remaking every damn thing over and over and over again. And and I was like, oh my God, how many Halloweens do we have to see? Right. <laughs> it is what it is. Let me in the door, please. No? Ab absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So check it out. I got my five questions that I usually ask every guest that come on. And uh, like I said, you can, you can answer them any way you want to, you know, but I do it for everybody. I call it my Oprah Winfrey Super Soul Sunday questions. So. <laughs> Myself and Joe Claire just interviewed. I ain't never did. <laughs> Come on with it. All right. So, what do you know about the industry now, opposed to what you didn't know when you first entered? Oh God, where do I start? <laughs> um, what do I know now? Um, I mean, I could give you like the shady answer about like how you know. There's a difference between your friends and, and acquaintances and yeah. people yeah. Have and all that other stuff. And really, nobody's an advocate for you but you. Um, but I think what I know now, which I wish I knew then, because there were branding didn't exist, right? And mm -hmm. even though we were all self-sufficient hustlers and really just trying to promote ourselves and licking our envelopes and doing all the, the long form of stuff, um, if I really knew how to brand myself, because I've never had a publicist um, never, I've had maybe a commercial agent, had a manager who really just helped me with a contract, but all these jobs and hustling I've done myself. Um, and I've maybe got a stronger team behind me, which I'm trying to do now, of people who can take places that I can't get to, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always, I always tell people like, you know, it's, it's good, I, I, I prefer it this way, because by the time I do hire you, I've already done the job. Now yeah. I have to make sure you do what you're supposed to do. I'm exhausted though. <laughs> at, at this point now I'm ready to micromanage somebody who can yeah. hit me and I'll be in dance film festival and Sundance. Yeah. <laughs> but me like this making all the woo it's, it's, it's girl, so fine. Long road. What advice would you give your 19 year old self? Um save more money for sure. Um and probably, because I've always worked hard, very diligent, I'm very OCD about professionalism, but um, hmm, as far as this career goes, probably should have, you know, there's that saying, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. But there's that saying, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So I would have made it a point for that more people of power to know who I am. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that one definitely. Mm -hmm. What feeds your spirit? Ooh, music, dance, sex, good food, money, shopping, more dance. Like adventurous stuff really feeds my soul. Like I, you know, I jump out of airplanes. I'm you know doing trapeze. Like all of that stuff excites me. Traveling feeds my yeah. soul. Passport queen. Get out of here any chance I can get 
that feeds my soul. Being you, and, you and Jeanette Branch, man. I told JJ, I said, listen, I said, you talking to you, I, I feel like jumping off and burning the bridge talking to you. Absolutely. It's, it's, that, it's, that, it's that energy you get. And it, 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 you know, you see men do it a lot, but it's really exciting when you see women do it because it's just like, whoa. And it's especially, so coming. Well, I swim like a fish, and most black women are like, oh no. <laughs> I put a baseball hat, whatever. So right, yeah, right, I, right, right. I dive, I bungee jump, and I live for all of that. JJ's my girl. We're club kids together. Shout out to JJ Branch, man. Appreciate her. She's been, she's definitely been a, a very important influence in my life, and definitely continues to be so. That's right. We kicked it at her wedding. What am I saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> Told you, I don't be remembering stuff. That's a Sagittarius for you. Sagittarius will not remember nothing. <laughs> All of it. Because I'll be floating around talking, chit-chatting, and you go to like, you did what? Was the alcohol involved? Right. <laughs> All right. So what do you want your legacy to be? Ooh. Mm. Um, one, that, well, for one, I want to be in the conversation with you say dancers and you're talking about Debbie Allen and Paula Abdul and Misty Copeland, like talking about dancers and Martha Graham and all of them. I hope when you talk about dance that my name is in the conversation. For sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. I want people to say that she was professional, that she worked hard, that she wasn't a sellout, um, that I never got on my knees for a job, and that I was always kind, and that I worked hard, the work ethic was fearless yeah that you are that you are <laughs> definitely what are you grateful for oh everything oxygen <laughs> <laughs> seriously like uh, especially yeah always um the gift that is that has been given in this do what it does you know me my one of my goals too is to be a female action hero and you know, even though I still got a couple of flips left in me, I'm not in my prime, but I still can. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I had to say to myself that you've been a superhero this whole time, flying through the air, double, triples, every whole time, like in the physical sense. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. yes, I have. Um, so I'm grateful for the gift and all that this body can do, and has, and has taken me to see other parts of the world, like this gift of dance and gymnastics. Um, and I'm grateful for. My my real core friend who on the days when I don't have a job and I'm in front of a TV screen with a mic in my hand on the red carpet, whatever, like a still my ride or die people. Um, so I'm grateful for that. They may be small, but they're mine. Right. You don't really know how important that is until you're at a point where you can't do anything for anybody. Absolutely. Like, I just remember, even like in between my jobs, you know, when you're, it's crazy. It's like when you're dating, and you got a man, everybody wants it, but they're single, nobody's around. So it's the same thing with work. <laughs> right? When you don't, yeah. you don't have a job, you can't get one. But the man you get one, then everybody can come host this, be here, whatever. And I remember, like, all the radio stations, you get tickets and invites and everything. And the minute, like, the station gets sold or you move to another, it's like those invitations disappear. Those yeah. phones, like, hey, I'm still the same girl who's been working hard for 20 years. Can I come to that party? Well... <laughs> right, right, right. And that's I learned not to take personal. So, you know. And at some point now, people are like don't even go, you know. They, they, yeah. But I've, I've I've learned, and I've made it um, my business too that if if I truly care about someone, to always check in. Yeah. Because it's in the, in those moments where you don't see them, and they're not on social media, and they're not working. Those are the moments that they really just need to say, hey, what's going on? You good? I'm just checking on you. Yeah, I don't want anything I, from you. I just want to make sure you're good. I've tried to do better at that. Like, And I say, you know how you see something, you're like, oh, call them. And then you forget it. Or you see something else, you forgot to call them. I need to call them. And then somehow, two weeks later, they call you. So that's the universe putting you together. But you feel kind of bad, like you should have called them because anything could have happened. You know? Absolutely. So I'm trying to do better at that and quicker more responsive, faster when I have thoughts like that. Like I just reached out to this guy who I've known for 20 something years and we've been friends, but not like we should know each other better. And he right. just crossed my mind and I was like, let me try and get to check on him and see what's what and what he's doing. And 
you know, all of that. I'm the, I'm the one who keeps all of my friendships together. Like, and I, which is a good thing because all of my, like from Girl Scouts, yes, y'all, I got all the way through. <laughs> cadets, everything. Um, all of my gymnastic teams from my elementary school to my high school to my college team. Like, I'm the one who sends postcards, that and the other. And so I was like, sometimes I got to fall back and be like, who's checking on me? Well, cool. make sure, I, make sure I, I'll, get, I'll put you because I'm a Christmas card person. Make oh. sure I get you on my Christmas card list. Okay, and I, 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 it's just for me, it's just like you know, um, I love the fact that I'm I'm surrounded by people who love doing the same thing that I'm doing. But I also, if if, if I if I love you, I love you. Yeah, I, you could be at, on the red carpet about to win an Oscar. If I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. I don't fuck with you if you broke. I don't fuck with you if you on the red carpet. That's right. how I am. So it's like if I really every like I, that's why everything that I do, Leslie, has to be intentional. It has to be intentional and it has to be genuine. If it's not genuine, I ain't doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. It takes so much work to do stuff that's not organic and genuine, mm -hmm. right? Because then gotta like the pretense and the rehearsal and the, it's too much. It's too much. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen. Thank you so much for coming on with me and, and just engaging me in conversation, man. You don't know how much I appreciate it. Thank I'm you. I know you're a busy woman. Appreciative because you have done nothing but show me love and support. We don't even know each other that well. And I feel like I've known you for 20 years and you make me feel like how I want to feel like inspiration of people and you make me feel like I'm doing my job. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it once again. Leslie, big Les, everybody. Give a <laughs> give a give a shout out. Give us some love. Thank you so much. Anything that you need to let us know about? Um uh, yeah, I no. need y'all to go to Les and Joe the Ruckus uh on IG and the uh podcast The Ruckus with Les and Joe on YouTube and Spotify and Apple because being so cool working on that podcast thing Hawk trying to get this deal to take the tv so oh Usher, uh, that's going to debut tomorrow thursday 4 p.m Pacific, um seven o'clock eastern so make sure you support us on that so please eat joe, um, joe claire still in dc he's still in dc, still in DC right? he lived in la for a second but you know he ain't giving up dc like that my boy walter maxwell jones is actually on um the the bet show with mm -hmm. Uncle Tommy and uh he we were just talking about Joe Claire earlier today, so it's funny you mentioned him. That's yeah. So keep supporting me. I appreciate you. Uh, I may throw my court back on, maybe my dancing shoes back on. Shout out to Universal Hip Hop Museum. We're about to do a collab together. So thank you to Rocky Piano for that. And um, you know, keep it going. See, I'm at the stage now, I gotta put on so I can see the <laughs> like I'm catch I'm catching people as they come. John Copeland, thank you. The Gentleman's Corner is going to jump off at 9 o'clock. Thank you guys for always coming in. Thank you guys for always supporting. You don't know how much I appreciate it. Thank you, Angie. I appreciate you. I see you. And listen, have a blessed one. I wish you nothing but all the success in the future. Godspeed. Love and blessings. Thank you. Bye, y'all.